My, how fickle political friends can be. It seemed like just yesterday that Democrat candidates hung on so tightly to their Messiah that they nearly smothered him. They sang his praises and repeated the mantra of hope. They drank the Kool-Aid of change. They ran so fast to a photo op with the one that they nearly trampled anybody who got in their way. But alas, that was yesterday, before the subjects of the kingdom of abomination saw the devastating effects of Obama's hope and change. While it remained a mystery, hope waned eternal. But now they're French kissing his hope and change up front and personal, and they don't like its taste. Today, with little money, less hope, and the desire only to change back to what life was like before their dime store messiah hypnotized them into following him blindly, Democrat Colorado Senator Mark Udall, in a desperate attempt to distance himself from the false messiah, in macho bravado says, the last person Obama wants to see walking up the White House lawn is me. Yeah, right. Democrat Alaska Senator, while confessing that he voted for Obama, now boasts from now on he will be a thorn in the side of Obama. Former Brock cheerleader Kay Hagan, the incumbent U.S. Senator in North Carolina, was painted into a corner by an MSNBC reporter asking if she thought the president had shown strong leadership. After trying to duck the question and sheepishly fumbling for words, she said, quote, um, no, unquote. So there you go. The cycle of destruction is nearly complete. Obama promised the world, but nearly destroyed it. Between his policies of propping up the murderous Islamic State regime and inexplicably fanning the flames of Ebola spreading into a worldwide panic without any quarantines, Democrats, like rats, are as fast as they can fleeing the deck of the sinking USS Obama.